Hi, I'm Angie Callahan. Welcome to School Talk Monthly. In this program, we'll talk about the live shows coming in November to WHRO. You'll also see a clip from a brand new children's series, hear about the Virginian Pilots Newspapers and Education Project, and find out who our Schools of the Month are. WHRO's Classroom Guide is online this year and features PBS Classroom Resources, including descriptions of teacher resources available from the producers of both primetime and children's programming. The descriptions indicate if the site has streaming video and what resources exist, including games, lesson plans, places for students to submit work, and other activities. We also have links to 50 whiteboard games from PBS Kids and PBS Kids Go. There is information about all the live instructional programs we'll be carrying on WHRO 15-1, including Colonial Williamsburg's live electronic field trips, Fairfax Network's Meet the Author, and the Kennedy Center's Performing Arts Series, as well as their in-depth Explore the Arts series. Under Continuing Education, you'll find our Parenting, Professional Development, and Adult Education programs. We also have links to four new interactive STEM games for middle school students, funded by the U.S. Department of Education and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. The games feature pre-algebra, Algebra 1 and 2, Proportional Reasoning, Measurement, and the 5E Learning Cycle. Another new middle school game, Mission U.S., is a revolutionary way to learn history. It is also funded in part by CPB. Check out all these resources at whro.org classroom. Now let's take a look at the live field trip coming in November from Colonial Williamsburg. History comes to life with Colonial Williamsburg's electronic field trip series. Citizens, you have What if our government had too much power and there was no protection of individual freedoms? No, you can't arrest her. She has rights. Step aside, miss. Read her her rights under the law. Watch the Bill of Rights and experience the electronic field trip series. Register your school today. The Bill of Rights airs live at 10 a.m. and again at 1 p.m. Thursday, November 18th. For more information on this live electronic field trip, go to history.org slash trips. Live shows coming in November from the Kennedy Center include Ella on November 5th and the Tambuco Percussion Ensemble on November 19th. Both shows air from 11 a.m. until 12 noon. At 1 p.m. on November 5th, we feature a new series from the Kennedy Center, Explore the Arts Up Close and Personal. On that day, it's an hour with Marvin Hamblish. For more information on these live shows, go to kennedy-center.org slash education slash PWTV. With me in the studio is Debbie Bellucci. She is the Educational Services Manager at the Virginian Pilot. Welcome to School Talk, Debbie. Thank you, Angie. Good to see you again. Nice to see you. Well, you have lots of different projects going for schools and for students, mm -hmm. so I really wanted you to come on this show and talk a little bit about each one of those. Thank you. Here we are at the beginning of the school year, and the first one is the Newspapers in Education. Can you tell us a little bit about that particular project? I sure can. Uh, newspapers in Education is our way of um, reaching out to students and teachers to allow them to use our newspaper daily in their classroom as part of their curriculum. And we have a website that teachers can register with. It's free. There's no cost. And with that, every day they get to see that day's newspaper electronically um, through the website. Um, the, are, there's also um, activities that are posted every day to go along with the newspaper um, for ideas for the teachers to use with the kids. So it's very, it's, it's fresh. That's what the good thing is, is it's a fresh approach to using news in the classroom every day and keeps the children up on current events as well. Absolutely, and you'd be surprised how you can use it for math and science and all sorts of things. It's not just about the literacy, it's not just about English, it's not just about those things. There's activities that tie into all the different subjects. That's excellent. Now, well, tell us what the, uh, can you tell us what the uh, web address is yes. that teachers need to go to? It's very simple, it's www.usepilotnews.com. 
usepilotnews.com. Yes. I like that. Yes. Now, in years past, didn't schools get actually get copies of the newspaper in print? Mm -hmm. Schools still can order um, an education rate subscription to actually have the newspapers delivered to their class classrooms, but with all the budget cuts going mm -hmm. on, a lot of them just can't afford to do that anymore. And so offering it free um, in an electronic version is really just as nice and a little bit easier for them. Um, if they want printed copies, though, they are more than welcome to get a subscription at a reduced rate, and they can give us a call and let us know that they'd like to do that. Well, I like the reduced rate, but then you don't get your fingers all, <laughs> all dirty, so you can just use the right. online version. That's right. Now, does it look like the newspaper? Absolutely. Is it, the news it is the newspaper it's, scanned it's in. It's a replica of the newspaper. The pages turn exactly the same. You still get your crossword puzzles. You get <laughs> cartoons. You get all the inserts and everything, the coupons. Everything is in there. It's an exact replica. Well, that's great. And so you say it's free. They just yep. have to go to use pilot pilot news news dot com. com. Yes. And, and uh, teachers can have this in their classroom yep. uh, year round. Yes, absolutely. And they can also, the students can actually access the um, website from home and log in from home in the same way they do in their classrooms so that their parents can either do homework with them or see the newspaper at, from home as well. Well, that's nice. Yeah. That's something I didn't know. That's yeah. a nice side benefit mm -hmm. for any students who's, yeah. whose teachers use this. Do you have pretty good uh, usage? Um, actually, we have, we, we call them licenses or users, mm -hmm. and we actually are up to about 18,000 in our Hampton Roads area that have registered. That's excellent. So that's a huge jump from last year, and I think a lot of it has to do with the economy, and like I said, the budget cuts and everything. The teachers are realizing the value of it and how easy it is. So. Is, is it a national project? Or do other mm -hmm. newspapers also yes. do this? Yes, it's a national project. Um, the newspaper and education program is nationwide, and a lot of the local newspapers have adopted it, and it's been a wonderful thing for everybody. Well, that's great. So teachers, mm -hmm. all you need to do is go to the website yep. and uh, get uh, become a, have a license then yes. to use it in your classroom. And then students can see it at home. I like yeah. that aspect. <laughs> that's very well, that's good. That's a bonus not everybody knew about until now. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Okay, well, let's go into a, another project okay. that, that you're working on right now, which mm -hmm. is the Joy Fund. The Joy Fund. The Joy Fund relates to education in that the... Um, the students who may have a need in their family or their families have a need to be assisted by the Salvation Army can apply through the school. There's applications that are given out to the school each year. Now the Joy Fund ties in because we get community donations so that we can purchase the toys for the kids during the holidays. So we're really a community financial way of donating to this project mm -hmm. and the Salvation Army actually does the process and we all come together um, during the holidays along with some other organizations and the families come in and they pick out what they would like for their kids and then they don't have to go all over town and different organizations you know trying to contribute everybody's all in one place so it's really a great thing and it makes it very easy for the families to make their Christmases and holidays nicer for their kids. Absolutely yeah. and now you say the schools have these applications? Yes the Salvation Army um, contacts every primary and elementary school mm -hmm. to give out the applications um, and also I believe social services offices get them too so if they miss the opportunity to pick one up at the school they can go to a local social services and pick it up as well. So schools or social services. Yeah. Well, good good yeah. luck with that effort. I, yeah. I often see it in the newspaper, the yeah. Joy Fund, uh, during the holidays, and, mm -hmm. and um, I think it's um, a very special uh, benefit that you all offer the, <laughs> the families in Hampton Roads. Thank you. And now let's talk about another activity mm -hmm. that you're very involved with. We're actually involved with you here at WHRO. We have been hosting the live Virginian Pilot Spelling Bee for the past few years. We've been working with mm -hmm. Debbie on it. Uh, but why, why I wanted Debbie on right now is now is the time yep. for schools to start registering and getting their own spelling bees lined yes. up. So now let's first talk about how do schools register? Schools um, register their classrooms. Um, the requirement for the grade level is um, sixth through eighth graders can mm -hmm. participate in RB. So basically and, middle school. Yes, middle school. Um, and a um, representative from the school would need to register with the National Script Spelling Bee, which, and their website is www.spellingbee.com. That one's pretty <laughs> easy too, spellingbee.com. Spellingbee.com, and that's where everybody starts. They would need to register with National first, and then they, National kind of takes it from there um, as far as getting the materials and providing them with the web logins and all that kind of stuff so they can get study guides and things like that for the kids. 
candidates. And then once the local um, school has their spelling bee and declares a winner, a champion for, to represent their school, then as you know, that's when we bring them all here and they compete to win their spot, hopefully at the National Spelling Bee. And now there's there's a time frame, isn't there, mm -hmm. uh, in order, you sh schools should be doing their local bees between now and? Um, I know they can register for the competition um, in the month of October. I think they could probably mm -hmm. get on there now and do it. It's mm -hmm. pretty much open and the deadline is in October sometime. And I believe their bee has to be finished at sometime in January or early, yeah, in January I believe it is. I'd have to check that, I'm sorry. But that's <laughs> a good thing right now is mm -hmm. a good time for, for middle schools to start thinking yes. about this, to go to spellingbee.com yes. and take a look at the, the website and to start mm -hmm. thinking about having your own bee. Yeah. And on the website, they have the uh, they have tutorials, yes. don't they? Yes. And they have links and free downloads to study words and entomologies and all that kind of stuff. So they really have a very comprehensive website for everybody to study from and to where to go to get extra materials and things like that. So the, it's a very, it's a great interactive website. Well, we've had lots of fun mm -hmm. uh, the past few years <laughs> yeah. uh, doing the live spelling bee here at WHRO with the with the Virginian pilot. So we thought we'd take just a moment here to look back at the very end of last year's <laughs> bee when it was down to three three young spellers right here in this studio battling it out for the champion last year. Here's our bee. As we said, these words very difficult, and we're getting further into the round. We are to Elizabeth now, and your word is appendicitis. Appendicitis. A. P. P. E. N. D. I. C. I. T. I. S. Appendicitis. Correct. And Kiana, your word for this round is going to be septennial. Septennial, can I have the definition please? Yes, it's uh, continuing or lasting for seven years. Can I have the language of origin? The word is from Latin. Could you use it in a sentence? Yes, since legislation in 1716, the British government has had septennial parliaments. Previously, they were triennial. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Am I pronouncing it correctly? Septennial? Can it be also septennial? Like sup? Septennial. Septennial. S E P T E N. N I L. N I A L. Incorrect. We're getting closer to the championship word. Now let me explain. We're going to have Walter and Elizabeth still spelling. When one of them finally spells the last word, they then have to spell an additional championship word or we go back again uh, to the round. So, Walter, if you're ready, we're going to go to your word for this round, which is Pythonist. Could you repeat the word? Pythonist. Any um, alternate pronunciations? Pythonist. Pythonist. Language of origin? The word is from an originally Greek word that passed into Latin. P Y T H O N I S T. Pythonist? Correct. Aunt Elizabeth, your word is going to be jut. Can you repeat the word, please? Jut. Jute. Jute. Can I get the definition, please? Yes. It's the glossy fiber of either of two East Indian plants used chiefly for sacking burlap and the cheaper varieties of twine. Jute. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Jute. J U T. Jute. Incorrect. And we're going to be right back to our Spelling Bee 2010 in just a moment.
We have come to the anticipated championship word. A new one-word round will begin. The speller will be given an opportunity to spell the next word on the list. If the speller succeeds in correctly spelling the anticipated championship word in this one-word round, we will have our 2010 Spelling Bee Champion. However, if the speller misspells the word in this one-word round, a new round will begin with all the spellers who spelled correctly and incorrectly in the previous round. And now, the anticipated championship word. All right, Walter is back at the microphone, and the anticipated championship word for you, Walter, if you're ready, is Osprey. Osprey? Oh, thank God I know this word. Osprey. O-S-P-R-E-Y. Osprey. Correct. Oh, dear. And we have a champion. For the 2010 Virginia Pilot WHRO TV Spelling Bee. Walter, congratulations to you. Thank you. Last year was great. Guess what? We've got the date set for this year. Uh, it's actually 2011. Yes. It will be on Saturday, February 12th, okay. right here in the WHRO studios. We hope to see even more students than we had last year. Uh, we will keep expanding as far as we can. Uh, but uh, we really encourage all schools, middle schools, go to spellingbee.com and get started with your own bee. There is a fee. Mm -hmm. It's $99. $99, but they also offer through spellingbee.com the ability to um, go out and do a little fundraising within their school to, to cover that fee. So they provide some materials for that as well. Well, and it certainly would be a, an activity that PTAs could yes. sponsor. $99 is not that right. much to, right. to have your school recognized mm -hmm. on uh, the Virginian Pilot Spelling Bee yes. live <laughs> right here on WHRO <laughs> in February, February 12th. We hope to see you then, and Debbie, we know we'll see yes, you then. Yes, we will. <laughs> Good luck with all of your endeavors. Thank you, Angie. And thanks for stopping by. Alrighty, bye. There's a new cat in town on PBS Kids, and you can see him both on WHRO TV 15-1 and on WHRO Kids 15-3. Who could it be, you ask? Take a look. On the board! <laughs> What's all the hullabaloo? Wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. It's adventure time! Funny, I thought it was bed time. Ha! That is funny. Are you ready? Yes, we are! Are you steady? Yes, we are! Are you sure you're ready to explore? Yes, we are! Then buckle up! <laughs> It seems a bit rude to arrive quite so tall. We might accidentally frighten them all. Sally, hit the shrink -a doodle if you please. <laughs> Flick the jigger, my wizard! <laughs> Here we go, 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 go! On an adventure, the thing of my jigger is up and away! Go, 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 go! On an adventure, we're flying with the cat in the hat today! We couldn't make shadows without any light, so we're off to the firefly bushes tonight! Here we go, 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 go! On an adventure, go, 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 go! The Cat in the Hat knows a lot about that airs on WHRO 151 Monday through Friday at 8.30 a.m. and 2.30 p.m. and on Sunday mornings at 7.30. On WHRO Kids, catch the cat several times every day. The cat's website is as fun as he is. You'll find it at pbskids.org slash cat in the hat. Now it's time to recognize our schools of the month. Armstrong Elementary in Hampton 
opened its doors this fall with a completely new foundation for learning. After receiving positive feedback from faculty and parents and spending several years preparing, Armstrong made the shift to an arts-themed school. The school is teaming with museums and art organizations to infuse arts into everyday lessons and writing grants to get artists in residence with the goal of improving test scores, reducing the number of discipline referrals, and improving student attendance. For using a strong arts foundation to build creativity, concentration, problem solving, and self-discipline, we honor Armstrong, our elementary school of the month. Students at Pocosin Middle School recently welcomed a visit from Virginia Senator John Miller. Senator Miller met with the entire 8th grade student body to discuss the policy making process of the General Assembly and allowed them to ask questions as they prepared for their upcoming Social Studies SOLs. For giving students the opportunity to learn about our government firsthand, we congratulate Pocosin, our Middle School of the Month. York High School in York County started this semester with a new addition to its campus, the Lifelong Learning Center. The center is dedicated to professional and personal development in the field of technology training. A wide range of classes are available for different levels of experience, from basic computing skills to desktop publishing solutions. Classes are open to York High School students, employees, retirees, and community members. For encouraging continuing education at any level, we salute York, our High School of the Month. Norfolk Academy was one of just three schools in the nation to receive a grant from the Edward E. Ford Foundation to help fund a significant new educational program. In partnership with the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, the Chesapeake Bay Fellows Program is a multi-year initiative for Norfolk Academy students, promoting ownership and stewardship of the Chesapeake Bay by engaging students beyond the classroom in interdisciplinary study. The curriculum will blend rigorous academic study with hands-on analysis and public advocacy. For teaching students to embrace their civic responsibilities, we applaud Norfolk Academy, our independent school of the month. The 25th anniversary of the Great Computer Challenge Junior Division was a wonderful experience for all who attended. And for those who didn't get a chance to be there, here's what happened. I'm here at the 25th anniversary of the Great Computer Challenge Junior Division. We have 110 teams competing this year. It's a great competition. It's a great event. They're all winners. We're pleased to be here. Come on and join in the fun. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the 25th Annual Great Computer Challenge. Give yourselves a big hand for being here. There are challenges that we can overcome, right? And that's kind of what the Great Computer Challenge is all about. So I would like to thank the President, John Broderick. Good luck to everyone. It's just a delight to have you here on campus. Thank you.
Okay, everybody turn over your sheets. And good luck to you. Elementary. And the fourth school, Marchmont Elementary. <laughs> the Gloucester School, PC Walker. I'm here with winners, first place winners from the GCC Junior Division Competition 2010. Hey everybody, how's it feel? What did you all win in today? We won in graphics arts level two. What did it feel like when they called your name? Uh, we were jumping for joy. Yay! That's the way it was at the 25th annual Great Computer Challenge here at Old Dominion University. I am here with all the winners. I'm proud of them, and I'm proud of each and every kid that came out today and competed. How about let's get a big cheer for GCC, okay? Here we go. One, two, three. GCC! The Great Computer Challenges for 2011 have been scheduled. The Senior Division will take place on March 5th and the Junior Division on May 14th. You'll find information at whro.org slash CII slash GCC. This program and all the links we talk about are available online at schooltalk.org. Well, that's all for now. See you next time on School Talk.